Welcome to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Odie Johns, and we are going to go off on the Department of Education today. Now, how can a, a department that costs $105 billion a year right now, how could cutting it actually pay off the entire national debt? Well, come with me on a little journey real quick, because what they love to do is manipulate the numbers so that you get numbers from everywhere. Because surely you wouldn't be able to come up with $21 trillion if you simply cut the Department of Education, would you, and made them accountable for the money they spent? Well, actually, according to Forbes magazine, that's correct. In fact, if we cut them, we would be able to pay off our entire national debt. Now, how could that be? Well, let's see here. In 2010, the federal government spent 10.1% of, uh, of their money on, on uh, education, federal spending, uh, of the total federal spending, 10.1% of it, I'm sorry, came from the federal government. It was $105 billion that year federally, meaning the total cost of our education, not just on the federal level, but the total cost, if only 10% of it is $105 billion at the federal level, that means on every level, education costs over $1 trillion per year. That is the same as healthcare, which is our highest cost in the entire nation. So when we're talking about the Department of Education, they love to pretend to be puny, but remember they are actually tied as the most expensive thing in all of America. Think of the healthcare industry. Think of the technology that goes into it, the amount of study, uh, the, the work, the labor, the, the, the prescription drugs, the expense. And then just imagine, remember in your head throughout this whole thing, the Department of Education is the exact same price. The only difference is, is for healthcare, we get it all from the federal government. We know how much Medicaid is. We know how much Medicare is. With the Department of Education, they give you a little bit, but they hide all the rest of it. See, the problem with the Department of Education, part of it, is all the regulations. They aren't required to disclose anything that they're spending. They will tell you, sometimes they'll say, ah, we spent 90% on this or 90% on that. They have very few audits. But the reason Forbes says that we could save $21 trillion by eliminating them is because if every district were to average the same amount of loss as the districts that have been audited, it would pay off the entire national debt. That is staggering, my friends, and that's just the money side of it. We haven't even begun to talk about education yet. So let's talk about how all this comes up. Now, the Department of Education has been around to some degree for a very long time, since the 1800s. Uh, it used to be combined with the Department of Health, but of course, you know how they love to multiply and get multiple different departments there. And so uh, they said, well, why combine it when we can just have, you know, many different offices, many different departments. So of course it expanded and it's grown. But uh, the, originally, these were only, the only reason the Department of Education existed in any capacity before, the 19, before 1976 was to, to make sure that there was land available. And the Department of Education would say, hey, this land isn't in use, you know, let's, let's, we have some land, let's use it for a school, let's use it for the buildings. And so the, this Department of Education was designed to make sure that, that these places could be set aside, they were owned by the government, which I know we all hate, I'm not, I'm not vouching for that, but I'm saying right now, not so bad maybe. So this thing really doesn't get ugly in the early years. Yeah, there's some scandals. They overspend money. That's just government in general. But the really bad stuff begins in the 1970s. Now, in 1975, I want you to remember, let's put a pin in 1975. When we look at our standardized test scores compared to the entire rest of the world, number one in math, number one in science, number one in education, number one across the board, literacy, you name it, 1975, USA is top dog. All right, so that's where we're at in 1975. Number one in the world. 1976, the following year, presidential candidate Jimmy Carter promises to create a Department of Education. He is endorsed by the National Education Association. This is the first time that the NEA, 
has ever endorsed a presidential candidate in more than a century of existence. Now that's problematic. <laughs> when your union says, um, we endorse this guy for president, that's, they're speaking for everybody. They're speaking for all of the teachers. And so the, the union decides to go full on corrupt and just say, yeah, we, you know what? We're not even gonna pretend to be unbiased. We endorse this guy. So how do you feel if you're a teacher and you maybe endorse, oh, I don't know, anybody else except for Jimmy Carter was a better choice. Jimmy Carter might be the worst president in American history, okay? But they endorsed him. And you might have said, well, that's not my choice. Well, too bad. They use your union dues, which you were required to pay, by the way, in order to endorse the other guy, in order to finance and sponsor Jimmy Carter, the worst president in U.S. history, maybe. Eh, interning the Japanese is pretty bad. FDR gets a few knocks. Trail of Tears was awful, Andrew Jackson. But at least in, in this lifetime, in this last century, man, or last 50 years, it's, it's really hard to argue against Carter. Uh, almost single-handedly destroys our economic infrastructure. Um, in case you were wondering why Reagan was so popular, when you compare it to how Carter was unpopular, it might make a lot more sense. Anyway, thank you, National Education Association, for officially endorsing one of the worst presidents in American history. According to Education by the Numbers, high school test scores haven't improved in the last 40 years. Well, let's see here. What started the last 40 years ago? Oh, that's right. Back when we were number one in the world. Now, here's the thing is our test scores have stayed somewhat similar, as they noticed. The difference is education is advancing across the world. As people are finding that deregulation is better and having less obstacles in your way, being able to choose your own teachers, choose your own classes, countries that aren't us have found out that the grading system is kind of stupid because we just say, uh, it's sixth grade, everybody is in about these classes and make a rough guess. Instead of saying, hey, here's where you're at in math, here's where you, you're at in English. You would think Taylor making these things would be a slam dunk in the modern era Oh, but of course, there's all these regulations against putting school online. In fact, the Khan Academy has to pay a great deal to even be recognized as a place where you can get an education. And they're required to conform their standards to the same old fourth, fifth, sixth grade that is letting down the rest of the world, and they know it, but they're moving on, whereas we're staying the same. And there was a time we were number one in the world, and this system worked. But... Human ingenuity, we know we can get better. So their kids are getting smarter and our kids are getting dumber. Unfortunately, when you compare to what we paid, we're actually paying a lot more than they are too. Yeah, at the national level, there's a few. I believe only Luxembourg is higher, is higher than us. But when you factor in that other 90% of the cost that we didn't talk about, you know, we, we only look at the 10% the from the federal part. But if we look at the local and the state budgets, we crush the whole rest of the world. And so we're not getting much bang for our buck because now we're 47th in math and, and 38th in, English, in, in, in literacy. Just not good numbers. Again, our, our test scores have stayed the same, but while everybody else is improving, we've settled for staying the same because we keep doing the same thing. Well, why would we keep doing the same thing? Well, when you have a department that conforms everything, that says it has to say, stay the same, you don't progress. And so we go, as soon as we create this thing, we go from being number one in the world to number 50th, pretty much. And it's getting worse, even though we're putting more money into it, even adjusted for inflation. Now, there were a lot of signs of this. Of course, it starts diminishing immediately because that's what happens when you have the government do anything. Look at the railway system, look at the road system, look at any of the other department rants that I have, and you'll understand that when the federal government takes over, yeah, they have no accountability, so things get worse. But they don't go downhill quite as bad as this. Education is a total travesty. 1991, the Senate investigation finds the federal student loan pro programs are plagued with fraud and abuse at every level. Although sound like my words, I'm sorry, that's a quote. Plagued with fraud and abuse at every 
level. That's a Senate investigation. That's Congress investigating themselves and admitting they are plagued with fraud, fraud and abuse at every level. They've cost taxpayers billions of dollars. The investigation accuses the Department of Education of, quote, again, gross management, gross mismanagement, ineptitude, and neglect. Annual losses from student loans pro loan programs rise from $448 million to $2.7 billion in 1990. Well, let's hear. How much is $2.7 billion in 1990? Well, gosh. If they only spent, let's hear, fast forward 20 years after that, and they only spend $100 billion on education, well, that would mean 3% of the money spent was actually fraud. But this is back in 1990, when they're only dealing with $50 billion for the Department of Education, which means that you're looking at about 6 7 8% what they found, this isn't even including what they didn't find, that 6% of it was fraud, was not real, was no good. 1994, the Department of Education admits that it's losing $3 billion, $4 billion annually to waste fraud and loan defaults in its college aid, aid, aid programs. Education Secretary Richard Riley calls the department's financial management worse than lax. One problem is the department wires billions of dollars each year to obscure trade schools based on undocumented claims about how many students are enrolled on federal scholarships. Well, gee, I thought that when I made something federal, they were supposed to take super good care of it. You're telling me the opposite is true? That the further you distance yourself, the individual from a program, that they don't care as much about the security, about the accountability, about the bang for the buck? No, of course they don't. 2002, another major fraud operation is uncovered in the Department of Education. A career employee forged more than $600,000 of false overtime claims and steals hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of department's electronic equipment. Now, the important thing to remember from this, this was not an audit. This wasn't like, oh, we did an audit and found this guy. This guy got caught because he confessed. So if one guy confesses and he stole $600,000 of stuff, do you think maybe there's a couple more? Do you think maybe that's why every single time they do an audit, the Department of Ed Education fails miserably? Do you think maybe also this is why they really don't want to be audited? They fight it tooth and nail and they have closed books that you can't see. When they did the movie, The Cartel, which featured the, the very famous scandal in New Jersey, where the Department of Education was losing money left and right, funneling money to uh, candidates that they liked, and not actually investing money in education, which is what they were supposed to do, they couldn't ever find the books. What they had to do was go to where, where the headquarters were and count the BMWs in the parking lot and then do the same for the teachers that they were supposed to be paying with that money. And so they actually compared Beamers to economy cars in, in order to find out, hey, maybe something is actually going wrong. That's what blew the lid off of this whole thing. The thing is, it's common sense. I have numbers from certain school districts, pretty much Google, school district fails audit, and you're going to be very impressed. This is why Forbes made the estimation that we're losing $21 trillion in education, the total cost of our national debt in this single department, because they can just assume that, well, the few times we actually look under the rock, it's this ugly. So I'm guessing that if we look under all of these rocks, it's going to be the same amount of ugly. It's common sense. Your school teacher, if you know one, knows their administrators make ridiculous amounts of money. They're just not allowed to talk about it, and they're not allowed to disclose it. They actually have a contract that forbids them from talking about it. Department of Education forbids teachers to even discuss what those salaries might be, even if they are not on the clock. 
So your school, local school teacher might see, might know, might witness the administrators who have very little to do with their education and find that, well, they are not allowed to say anything to you about it, but yeah, it seems fishy. It's one of those wink twice if something weird is going on and all of those teachers are going to wink twice at you. It's bad. Ah, 2002 is also the year that gave us the No Child Left Behind Act, signed into law by President George W. Bush. It's 650 pages in length and represents a new major federal thrust into the classroom. The law triggers a huge expansion in the department's K-12 spending, which has gotten worse, by the way, from $20 billion in 2000 to $37 billion in 2005. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go back real quick. I made a mistake. If we're only spending $20 billion in 2000, and today we're spending over $100 billion, first of all, think about that. 20 years later, we've quintupled the costs. So if something is quintupled the cost, think about this. If, if your wages would have to go up by five times the amount to afford all of your stuff going doing that same thing. Are you making five time as mu times as much as you were in the year 2000? Are you making five times the amount of money? Because that's how much more expensive education has gotten. But let's go back further to that or original report that I read where it said uh, $2.7 billion in 1990. If we're looking at less than $20 billion, that's now over 10% of their money just being lost, fraud, fraudulent at the federal level. State officials complain bitterly about the onerous regulations that No Child Left Behind related to such items as school testing, teacher qualifications, Spanish language tests, and after school t tutoring. No Child Left Behind was considered an expansion. Let me explain something about No Child Left Behind real quick. It does reward schools that do better and does not reward schools that do worse. Now, what people fail to understand is that it was all extra money. They aren't taking away money from schools that do poorly. They're just not getting all of the extras that's of, from schools that do well. This is how they were able to get it passed by saying, yes, we're going to reward schools that do well, but the ones that aren't doing as well still aren't going to get as much money. Now let's think about this again real quick. If we go from $20 billion in the year 2000 to $100 billion today, we poured an extra Eight, oh, it's $105 billion today. We poured an extra $85 billion into the system every single year to try and get our kids smarter. And we're not there yet. What happened with all that money? Well, we rewarded the schools that did better. But the thing is, the schools that did better only did better by comparison to the other schools. You see, the problem is we compared ourselves. We're comparing all of our schools combined. But when all of the education system sucks and is doing terribly and is letting down our students and betraying our families, then the, it's the best of a bad situation. We're really only giving the extra money, the $85 billion of extra money every year, to the ones that just aren't doing as bad as the others because they're all getting worse. We are falling behind in education from first to 50th since we established the department. So if we are getting that much worse, when we pay extra money into it, five times the amount as before, to reward those that do well, we're not actually incentivizing doing well. We're incentivizing sucking less. And man, oh man, have we incentivized it. If you've created a system that is blowing the world away on what you pay for it, in or out of pocket costs, I mean, we're talking taxpayer or personally funded, and you've managed to blow away the rest of the world with it, to the tune of if you saved all that money, you could have paid off the national debt, even still spending some money, but just getting rid of the fraud, the fraud part, that's substantial. 2008, the Department of Education spending. $68 billion, more than double what it was when it was a stat, you know, in, in the year 2000. Of course, that's way more than when the Department of Education was actually established in 1976. 
In the year 2009, the economic stimulus bill showers college students and state and local governments with $45 billion in extra education funding. Now, that was supposed to be temporary, but what do you know about all government spending when it's temporary? Hey, this is a one-time $45 billion extra here. Yeah, it's going to put us at about $100 billion a year, but you know, I mean, this year, but I'm sure next year it'll go down. Do you think it would down that next year? No, I already told you what we spend on it today. We're still spending over $100 billion on it. They spend it as an emergency fund, and then every year since then has been an emergency. Makes no mistake, my friends, we have an emergency with education. But throwing money at it is not helping, especially when there's absolutely no accountability for it. When there are laws in place that punish people for trying to find out how that money is spent. And still articles like Forbes come forward and say, yeah, we probably could save $21 trillion a year just by getting rid of the fraud that comes with the, with the Department of Education, with the education system in general, and the fraud that's allowed because the Department of Education has these mandates saying, you are not allowed to look into this. I wanted to end by going back real quick. I talk about being number one in the world in 1975 and this sad decline that we have to 50th here in the United States, 47th, 38th, somewhere down there. Got a bunch of third world countries ahead of us, which is always great when they're doing better in education than we are. But I want to go back to a promise that Carter made when he established this. Now, you ask almost any school teacher. I... I, My girlfriend has kids, they come home with rubrics and they say, you know, hey, it's really important that you read with your kids, that you spend time with your kids, that you you assist in their education. One of the promises that Carter made in 1976 when he promised to create this was that you wouldn't have to do that anymore. Education at home would be unnecessary because nobody needs to catch up. It's all going to be taken care of. Everything's going to be okay. You see, really what we've done is prove that there's no substitute for the education that you get at home. We poured unlimited amounts more money into it. We poured extra textbooks. We created standardized tests in a bunch of different languages. We, we've created t- mandatory tutoring programs and after-school programs that the teachers have to attend. We've done all of these things. We're getting worse instead of better. And teachers will tell you, almost unilaterally, that it's because parents aren't as involved with their child's education as they were before. The problem was, is you promised. You promised we wouldn't have to. Yeah, we give this extra money because money represents time. So we don't need to spend that time with our kids. One of the reasons our kids have probably gone downhill is because of a broken promise. Because they said, we trusted you to take care of it. And you never took care of it. The Department of Education doesn't just waste money. It's immoral. It's unethical. They don't care about education, and they are the worst enemies of education that this country or this planet has ever seen. The U.S. Department of Education is obscene, and it must be eradicated if we have any hope of progressing education in this country. It's simply in the way. If you can, do what you can, homeschool your kids, get out, just get out. Doing nothing, unschooling, a whole program designed around not teaching your kids anything is having better results than a government education program funded by all of the American taxpayers to the tune of the highest amount in the entire world is doing worse than teaching your kids nothing. Please join me. The Department of Education has to be eliminated for the sake of education. Until then, friends, thanks for tuning in, and keep fueling the fires of liberty.